here we are at the third week in September, and all the trees have had a very good growing season. This hornbeam, European hornbeam, has been in training, I would say, for the last 15 years in the field. And this thick trunk has developed probably over 30 years. And when I planted it, it was no thicker than a pencil. So we grow these trees in the field just to thicken. And when they get thick enough, I then chop them down to create the taper. You can't see the taper very much because it's sh uh, shrouded by all these leaves. But I will remove some of these leaves to show you what I do. But while it's growing, they grow so rapidly that they produce very thick branches. So over the last two years, I've been cutting off most of the thick branches. In fact, I cut off virtually all the thick branches except two only last year and grew all these. So all this growth, all this growth that you see has been grown since last April and I have trimmed them back twice already. So if left unkempt, these shoots can be as long as one and a half to two meters in length, but this is not what we want for bonsai. We need to trim it back. So the main thing with creating these large trunk bonsai is to create the trunk first, and then we think about the branches. So to reveal much of the trunk, I will cut a lot of this off. It is so vigorous that you have a lot of choice because they are very prolific in producing branches. And of course, that gives us so much flexibility in the design that we wish to create. So hidden behind all these leaves, tiny shoots, are some usable branches. I think you will have gathered by now that I love large trees. And even in my books I've always said that a large tree, a large bonsai, is quite different from a small bonsai. It's not that one is superior to the other, it's just that different people have different tastes. Like if you go into an art gallery you'll find paintings which are eight foot long, and about eight foot high or six foot high. Sometimes you get even bigger than that. I remember going to the Tate Gallery many years ago and I was surprised at the variety of sizes of paintings. You get miniatures which are literally like uh, the size of a matchbox. And yet you have these very large canvases. But the scale is so important because it gives you a quite different feeling when you view something large or view something small. The same goes for bonsai. When you see a large tree, at least to me, it gives a feeling of power and grandeur. Whereas small trees somehow do not do it for me. Now don't get me wrong, in case you think that I'm snobbish, I'm not. It's just that different people have different tastes. And as I've grown older, I have discovered that I have to respect people's tastes. What I like may not be what you like, and for the same reason, what you may like is not what I might like. So we've got to respect each other's preferences and tastes. And that's what makes for a more exciting and varied uh, art form. So having respect for people's tastes, I would say, is very, very important in most forms of art. So just by clearing the front, I'm getting to see what potential is there. Now, you must be wondering why I kept this branch. It's not often that you get thick branches that come down like this. I better cut this off. See, it comes down like that, so it makes it very, very interesting. And that thick branch going that side, I had the option of either keeping that one or keeping this one. But I don't think I can keep both. I will have to decide one or the other, or have neither. 
So I will discuss how I make the choice in just a moment. What a shame, growing all these lovely branches and then having to cut it off. But that's how bonsai are made. It's nice that you have the choice to make. If you have a tree that has very few branches, then there's no choice, so you're limited. And with limited options, the outcome is not going to be as interesting. So here we are, all these new branches. This is only a two-year branch, or is it a one-year branch? I don't know, maybe a one-year branch. And these have been only grown in the last one month because every time I cut off a shoot, a new one comes again. So you can just imagine how prolific these are and what a lot of choice you have. So you can vary the design as you wish and you won't have long to wait. So you get results very, very quickly. So all I'm doing is clearing the unwanted branches or branches that I can't make use of and then we will see what the next stage is. A lot of these very low branches I normally keep as what we call sacrificials and by now you probably will have got to understand what sacrificial branches are. Sacrificial branch, the term has only evolved in the last 30 or so years and the sacrificial branch is usually a branch that grows quite low on the trunk, usually at the base. And if you have a lot of branches and things growing at the base, it feeds back into that portion and helps to thicken it very rapidly. So that is how we use a sacrificial branch. So most of these branches seem to be in the right place. So we can probably keep those. Now, what I'm not sure about at the moment is still that vexed question of these two branches, whether to keep it or not. And you can see why. But actually, if I wanted to be a purist, I would get rid of both branches because neither of these branches would be in keeping with the rest of them. We usually need to keep all the branches similar thickness. If they're all of different thicknesses, then they're not so interesting. So we have to bite the bullet, as it were. Although this is quite interesting coming down like that, what does it do? I don't think it does much. In fact, it hides the trunk. And this is coming out very straight like that. So that is not much use either. Usually standing back gives you a very good idea as to what it looks like from afar. Now this branch coming out from here is not much use because branches usually come from the elbow. So that's not the elbow, this is right from the front, from the stomach as it were. So let's get rid of that one. So there you are, you see it keeps producing branches that I don't want because they're going in the wrong place. Now. I think I've grown this enough. If I let too many big branches grow there, it'll make this portion swell and it will look ugly. So let us get rid of that one. I'm going to use the silky saw. Whenever I use the saw, I always use a left hand glove in case the saw slips and then I won't get injured. So let's cut that off. Although it looks interesting, I don't think I'll have a use for it. If I had the patience, I would have earlier that. But I can't have everything. And I always have to remind myself not to be greedy. 
Now that's a nice clean trunk. Now this is coming out rather straight. Normally I like the branches to come down. And it is breaking the line of that beautiful trunk. So what good is that? We probably have to get rid of that as well. So I will have to take the difficult decision and get rid of it. So it just shows all these thick branches that have grown have proved in fact to be sacrificial branches because I didn't end up using them. I'm trying to tear it in case I get a nice texture from tearing. So as I said, these trees have been grown in the field for several years and they've taken up, taken up very fast. So now having removed those two very nice thick branches, I have a beautiful clean trunk. And that trunk is quite nice like that. I may change the position. What I haven't shown you so far is the other side of the tree. This side, I had been looking at it for quite a few years because where I cut it initially, I chopped it there to grow the taper. It's formed a beautiful hollow. And if someone bought this tree, they might well choose to use this side as a possible front. Now this branch grown this year is too thick. What a waste, isn't it? You keep growing it and then you chop, chop it off. See, that's quite interesting there. Cut that off. Next year I'll get about 100 new branches, so not to worry. They will grow very quickly. So that would look very interesting. That could be a possible front. This is where I always say that you need to keep an open mind because if you keep an open mind, you will be quite surprised as to what you can get eventually. So that could also be a very interesting front because a lot of trees in nature have these hollow trunks and that would eventually become a nice hollow trunk. So I will keep that for now. If, if I were to work this as the front, I will have to tilt the tree. There's no problem. If I tilt it slightly like this, I could still use this as the front rather than using this as the front. In fact, if you look at it, both of them look interesting. So where you have choice, then it becomes very difficult because you are literally spoiled for choice. The tree, I could carve that portion and the taper is very nice. You can see what I did. I chopped it there, then I chopped it here, then I chopped it here. So each year I grow the thing about 10 feet tall to pull it up and gradually I get the taper, tapering to a point. So that is how taper is made in deciduous trees. So I still have to make a decision, but because the hornbeam produces shoots so easily, I don't think it will be too difficult to change the front or for that matter the back of the tree. Now this is a very thick branch, it's only grown one in one year, so no worry, I can get more branches next year. That's not a problem at all. <laughs> I may end up cutting all the branches off. Well, that's how pots are made. <coughs> now this is going in the wrong direction. Instead of going that way, it's going this way. So let's get that off. So I keep saying not to worry because they produce branches so easily that Next year I can have a new set of branches and then make my choice again. So just to give you some idea as to what this tree would look like eventually, 
although I'm sure this is not going to be the final wiring at least it will give you some ideas to where we are going now I can't do the two branch principle on this one because this branch is a bit low no I might do it let's see so these are just to guide the branch in the right direction So this is coming out at the elbow, so always remember the branches should come out from the elbow of the tree. Okay, I'll take it up. Practice what I preach. basic design form is the triangular shape so branches slightly wider at the base now this branch is going up that way I may keep it for now although I think in the long term it should go off see you're always not wanting to cut off all this lovely growth that you've made but for the long-term good of the tree, we should get it off. I'm not too worried about these little stumps that are here because I can always carve it at a later date or use a wind cutter to carve hollows so that heals over flat. With deciduous trees, creating the trunk is what takes the time. Making the branches is easy, but the trunk really takes a great deal of time. And time is the most valuable commodity in bonsai. I've already decided that I'm using the hollow trunk side as the front and I'm going to tilt the tree much more come next year I will repot it in a slightly different angle and I'll be there In many countries where bonsai is still developing, for keen amateurs, getting the right type of what we call raw material, or in America they call it pre-bonsai material, is one of the biggest problems people have. Certainly in countries which have uh, not a very long tradition in bonsai, they have this problem even more acutely. They have hardly any decent, what I call, raw material. So when they come to our nursery and they see all this material that we have, they're absolutely agog. But then it takes time and forethought to produce this. I will keep this to give it more body, otherwise the front will become 
too bare and too empty. Now that I've more or less established the future shape of the tree, I can now direct all the shoots to grow in the desired direction. These last two years I've just been growing it because I couldn't make up my mind and I keep leaving these for making YouTube videos, but I can't leave them forever. Can't leave it too long. See this already a bit too thick to wire. And that's only, I think this is this year's shoot, grown since March or April of the new year. Even this is too thick. You must be wondering what will happen. There will be no branches left. No, don't worry. I have it all sussed out. Even that is a bit thick. So I'm trying to keep branches that are all fairly uniform thickness. Usually at public demonstrations where people work on deciduous trees, all they ever do, or all you can ever do, is to bring a stump, cut it back to uh, the shape you want, and then you've got to wait for the branches to grow again. So doing demonstrations on deciduous trees is quite a difficult task for public displays and uh, shows because there's not a lot you can do with them. Again, this is a very thick branch. You see how much thicker it is compared to the others. So this I'm going to get rid of. You see, that is much thicker than these. So that is out of character. So I'm going to get rid of this one. It's a shame, but I think we have to do that. We don't need that. So we'll try and keep almost all the branches the same thickness, and then they can develop together at the same rate. So we we'll get uniform branches, rather than have some branches very, very thick and some very, very thin. And that would look odd. Now we can see where we are going and since I've chosen this as the front I can make this the eventual leading shoot rather than the other side. So this shoot going upwards I can get rid of, I don't need that one and also this one which is growing vertically upwards. I would have used this as the leader if I used had I decided to use this as the front, I would have used this as the leader. Can you see? I could have used this as the leader. Wire it and stop it there. But since I'm not doing that, I'm going to cut this off. What a shame. Grow all that and then cut it off. And then I'm going to grow this as the leader. And I'm going to lean the whole tree this way. So I'll, I'm not going to do anything to this because I want to let it grow wild. Because while you let it grow strong, this taper will develop very nicely. So that's how we develop taper. We let it shoot up and then we cut it back to the right height. Uh, so that's how the tree will be. It'll end up like this. So we've got the tree looking like this. And if I put it back on the turntable, I'll just shorten that a little bit, the eventual front is going to be like this. So this is the tree disposition when we pot it next year. 
And that lovely hollow will be a nice feature. So this is what we have achieved. So what I thought originally would be this front, but whoever buys this tree might well want to change it. You can carve that and carve this. It could become very interesting because the options are always there. So this is the start of a nice thick trunk European hornbeam. And uh, I hope to show it to you in the middle of next summer and you won't recognize it. It will be a complete tree. In fact, I will show you some of the pictures that we've used in public displays. The Islington garden that I created has two very big hornbeams bigger than this and they were created in exactly the same way. So this is an example of how I start refining the hornbeams after growing them in the ground. I will find the old pictures where I started developing this, so hopefully you will see some sequence from the past showing you the development of this tree. So this tree, I would say, is almost two-thirds of the way there. Thank you.